I prefer to be someone who has to confront his many fears instead of someone who has the illusion he doesn't fear anything I see love as an evolution of true friendship. If you find a girl who reads, keeps her close. When you find her up at 2 a.m. clutching a book to her chest and weeping, make her a cup of tea and hold her. You may lose her for a couple of hours, but she will always come back to you. She'll talk as if the characters in the book are real because, for a while, they always are. Date a girl who reads because you deserve it. You deserve a girl who can give you the most colorful life imaginable. The only emotional connection of relevance is with my dog. My relationship with my dog, it's ridiculous. I was only given this life because I'm strong enough to live it. Music means freedom to me. But in acting you can pretend to be someone else and I like that. Twilight fans are literally on the verge of being clinically insane. I learned that if a relationship is honest, it can last through anything despite all the challenges we have to face and everything that happens around us. I don't want people to hate me. I basically do whatever I want. But one of the aspects of what I want is, I want people to like me. I had a stalker while filming a movie in Spain last year. She stood outside my apartment every day for weeks all day, every day. I was so bored and lonely that I went out and had dinner with. I just complained about everything in my life and she never came back. The link between my brain and my mouth is just not there anymore. I'm boring. I stay home, watch TV, and eat a lot of fast food. That's really exciting, isn't it? I always think everything is going to be my last job, so every single day is a gift. This whole life is an accident for me. Nothing can be good if you do it for money or for fame. I'm always shocked by the people who I'm attracted to. It's always completely random. I generally like people who are a bit crazy, but yeah, that's pretty much my only prerequisite. When you read the, it's like saying Edward Cullen is so beautiful I creamed myself. I mean every line is like that. He's the most ridiculous person who's so amazing at everything. I think a lot of actors tried to play that aspect. I just couldn't do it. And the more I read the script, the more I hated this guy, so that's how I played him, as a manic depressive who hates himself. Plus, he's a 108 year old virgin, so there's clearly some issues there in public, I hardly ever show feelings. That's what happens when everything you do is put under a magnifying glass. But if you've spent some time hiding behind your public mask, and you're back in your own environment, then all that suppressed emotion still has to be set loose. As a result, you are going to behave like a nutcase. I think that's why so many people who are famous go nuts. It's not necessarily that satisfying getting monetary success, but sometimes it keeps the door open to make what you want to make. I can't say I prefer blondes, brunettes, or redheads. I like emotion and elegance. Even expensive clothes do not guarantee a good look. You must be yourself above all. The stuff I find attractive in women I always regret finding attractive. I always like a kind of madness in a woman. I like it when they hate me right from the beginning. I haven't found one place in the world yet where I could disappear. I think that's just a general English attitude. I did the same thing to famous people. I definitely want to record an album, direct a film, and start my own religion. I guess I had to learn how to run properly. I spent a lot of time on a giant treadmill, like one of those wheels mice run around on, and got filmed doing it to improve my form. Cosmopolis is the movie of my life. I didn't consider myself an actor before, even if I had 10 years of acting behind me. I always felt like a fraud, and inappropriate. I doubt a lot. David Cronenberg gave me confidence in myself. He changed my way of acting and thinking in this industry. I want to strangle whoever invented that RPATS thing. I'm trying to make something every time that feels new and surprises people. Hopefully at least one person. But it's not like I turn it off. I don't make a movie and then go back to my normal life. When I'm finishing one movie the next day, I'm thinking about the next one. I might go to some tiny little town in Idaho with, like, three people living there. I am a big fan of music and clothing style of the 1960s. 
whether in England or the United States, I like everything from that time. Up until I was 12 my sisters used to dress me up as a girl and introduce me as Claudia. I've always said to my agents and stuff, like, it's going to be 10 years before people forget about Twilight, and that's totally understandable. Normally people keep working and working until their big break. You just keep trying to make the best of your decisions. Like I try to think how I used to think before all the Twilight movies. I can't see any advantage to fame. I'm happy with the life I have now. I've got the same two friends I've had since I was 12, and I can't see that changing. Girls, you know it's all just a game to them, relationships. Just go around stomping on everyone. I mean, look at this poor guy in the background with his collar up. You know he's just gonna get ruined by women. Sometimes I think, to hell with acting, and then I realize I could be working at a shoe shop. Acting is much cooler. I can't remember who said it, but a soul and a heaven must exist because good people aren't rewarded enough on earth. I always liked that idea, if that makes sense. I hate people who cry around me. I'm not friends with them anymore. Especially girls. Cause girls are crying all the time. It's like, shut up. I always get carried away when I'm kissing. I just go nuts. Walking away after it is the strangest moment for me. It's embarrassing not knowing what to say to each other. People just project their idea of my character onto me and they just seem to assume that I'm the same when in reality I'm not. I was quite intimidated by Ralph Fiennes. I didn't really talk to him while I was doing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and the only thing I did with him was when he stepped on my head. Then I went to this play and he was there. And this girl said, you've worked with Ralph Fiennes, haven't you, Robert? And I was like, well, no. And Ralph said, yes, I stepped on your head. And that was the extent of our conversation. I kind of wish people didn't know who I am, that I could just lie, say I'm a speechwriter for Obama. This is what I said before Twilight. And then Obama came along and picked up all these young writers. I found out this guy, John Favreau, who's not the actor John Favreau, is writing for him. And I was like, wow, I wonder if the people who thought I was bullshitting at the time are like, oh my god. That guy. That kid who was drunk in some bar actually wrote the healthcare bill. When I was 17 until, I don't know, 20, I had this massive, baseless confidence. This very clear idea of myself and how I would achieve success, which involved making decisions. I saw myself picking up the phone and saying absolutely not or definitely yes. Having control. Except you have to figure out whether the way you think at 19 or 20 has any value. And eventually I understood, with all that control, which was probably illusory, I wasn't progressing. So now I'm relinquishing a bit. I'll be a tiny bit naked. I don't think anyone can understand what's happening. Something like this is so rare. It's a mix of chance and coincidence. You wake up one day and you're suddenly a star. Really weird. All of a sudden everyone knows who you are while you haven't changed one bit. Everyone used to chuck snails at each other at school and I used to try and save them. And not only did I get in trouble for it, I got suspended for doing it. For saving the snails, I kept about four or five hundred of them at the back of the class, in snail land. We were like six or seven or something, people didn't even realize what they were doing. I had a strange compassion for snails. And the teacher just chucked them all in the trash in the end. I've never met anyone who's left a comment on anything. It's just demons who live in basements. I think pretty much all people who love each other had some kind of thing at first sight. I mean, there has to be some kind of moment where you, like, feel a different energy around someone. It's been amazing to play the same character through so many adventures. And it's so strange because my life has changed so much over these years, but Twilight and Edward Cullen will always be a part of me. It's been my whole life. My whole twenties. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I was at a small private school in London. I wasn't very academic. My dad said to me, okay, you might as well leave, since you're not working very hard. 
When I told I am wanted to stay on for my A-levels, he said I'd have to pay my own fees, then he'd pay me back if I got good grades. All of my favorite actors are American and I grew up watching American movies. It's weird, but I used to do a New Jersey accent in every audition in the States just because I like to do it, really. It's completely bizarre. Everybody would ask, where are you from? And I would say, oh, I'm from London. People were asking me how I'd feel when it all ends, on the first movie, and I don't think I've ever felt more completely bewildered knowing that I only have a month of Twilight stuff left to do. If I were a place, the area of South Bank, in London, between the Hayward Gallery, National Theater, and all other activities, I'm never bored. I would also say New York for the breathtaking skyline formed by the buildings and the fast pace of the city, whatever the time of day. Sometimes just when I say hello the right way, I'm like, whoa, I'm so cool. I have to look over my shoulder all the time, be really vigilant because at any moment, someone could be filming me or recording what I'm saying. I aspire to be Jack Nicholson. I love his every single mannerism. I used to try and be him in virtually everything I did, I don't know why. I watched one flew over the cuckoo's nest when I was about 13, and I dressed like him. I tried to do his accent. I did everything like him. I think it kind of stuck with me. I will keep that a secret as it was so indecent I doubt she was in her normal state of mind when she made it. It's funny now, trying to socialize with people. There's this cautiousness about people which I just find really weird. I have so much residue crap in my hair from years and years of not washing it and not having any sense of personal hygiene whatsoever. Even today, I go into these things where I'm supposed to be this sexy guy or whatever, and I'm literally asking, if I get plumes of dandruff on me, can you just brush it off? I'm really afraid of getting hit by cars, like terrified of it. I'm terrified of crossing streets. I'm also very accident prone. I think people aim for me. I remember when I was a teenager thinking my girlfriend was cheating on me and going around riling myself up, pretending to cry. It was totally illegitimate. I actually didn't feel anything. I went to some pub and then went crying all the way home. And I got into my dog's bed. I was crying and holding on to the dog. I woke up in the morning and the dog was looking at me like, you are fake. I just saw Twilight on TV for the first time a few days ago and when my song came on I was just thinking that it's so bizarre that I actually had a song in the movie. I was really unfit last year so I worked out for a long time then spent time by myself in Oregon. For about two months the only person I saw was my trainer. Every day I did a lot of running and I just didn't want to talk to anyone for two months. So when I started talking again, it was like you would communicate wrongly, like you wouldn't really remember how to speak. That was one of the key things as well as just reading the book, reading the script a million times, just figuring things out. I have been playing the piano for my entire life since I was three. When I was flying to Rome, we flew over London, I felt like bursting into tears. It's part of me, so I can't leave London behind for good. My dad said to me the other day, I really am an artistic person. I was shocked as I never saw him as a creative. I think me and my sisters are living out that side of him as my sister is another creative person. She's a songwriter. Money by Martin Amos. I read it when I was 15. I read it hundreds of times since then and it always makes me laugh. Amos has managed to create a world that is both funny and abrasive. I'd love to play John Self, the depraved hero, who's without illusions, he created. I never really considered myself attractive, really. I was always kind of gangly in school. It's nice that I've grown up with the same friends since I was 12, I have a very close-knit set of them. I grew up with a lot of people who a lot of other people regarded as heroes, and no one ever came to me for advice, no one ever came to me for protection, and so I don't ever really think I've been looked at as a hero. The script changed so much over seven months and just had loads and loads of rewrites. I tried to tailor things to what I was interested in, like the relationship with the dad changed quite a lot because I thought one of the things when you're a young guy one of your biggest fears is this irrational fear of walking in your dad's footsteps and living the same life as him. I thought, even if your dad's a good guy, 
You just want to assert your independence on everything, and it causes these irrational sort of rages. The script changed so much over seven months and just had loads and loads of rewrites. I tried to tailor things to what I was interested in, like the relationship with the dad changed quite a lot because I thought one of the things when you're a young guy one of your biggest fears is this irrational fear of walking in your dad's footsteps and living the same life as him. I thought, even if your dad's a good guy, you just want to assert your independence on everything and it causes these irrational sort of rages. I remember when I was younger I used to write in my diary, I want my luck to be spread. Never give me anything too lucky all at once. I'll take a little luck now and then, but spread it for 70 years. Now that all of this is happening, I'm sure the rest of my life will be ruined. I actually quite like working with kids, and I like working with animals, which is what everybody says you shouldn't do, because it makes you feel like you're not acting. I keep forgetting I'm speaking in an American accent sometimes. The dangerous thing is that you end up forgetting what your real accent is after a while. It's really strange, I've never done a job in an American accent before. Outside of my family, I don't really know. They're great people and my parents are great parents, and they brought me up very well, I think. I don't know, I think that's about all the heroes I've had. It's fun to deal with the terror and the huge highs and lows of things. We're still getting massive surprises anytime there's any Twilight related event or anything. This thing with everyone knowing you it's weird because people have this one-sided relationship where they look at your picture and feel they know you more than someone they actually know. I don't really know myself that well. You're trying to play someone who's seen by a lot of people as being this perfect thing, but what is that? That doesn't really mean anything. You're trying to play an archetype on one hand and then a character on the other, so I felt insanely frustrated right up until the last shot, and then it ended. I think that New Moon was my favorite book as well mainly because I like the juxtaposition of all sudden people being, it's such a hyped character, Edward, and there are so many people looking at him like a romantic hero. In New Moon, the way that I read it anyway, he's just so humbled. It's a character who's looking at Bella and thinking that he loves something too much, but he can't be around. He deliberately starts breaking up their relationship which I think is a very relatable thing and I think is very kind of painful. I was obsessed with Eminem when I was younger. When he first came out I was about 12 and fanatical about his slim shady CD. I think he's a genius. It's awkward doing it with anybody, but it's like Twister. Obviously, the best dressed awards is very relevant, I'm best dressed at all times. Contact lenses make me miserable as soon as I put them in. That's what creates the pouting and brooding character. In America there is a channel called True TV which is just reruns of cops and world's dumbest criminals. I could watch that the entire day. In 15 years or something I like the idea of just one paparazzo coming out and trying to get a picture and I just beat the shit out of him. I mean out of nowhere when my picture is not even worth and I've spent all my money so you can't sue me. My biggest problem in my life is I'm cheap and I didn't hire a publicist. In every awkward interview, normally actors get these things scripted. 